who should get the COVID-19 vaccine first? Doctors and nurses working the front lines of the pandemic? The elderly who suffered the gravest consequences of the virus? Police officers and firefighters who interact with the public on a daily basis and risk exposure? Grocery store employees who have been at their jobs throughout this pandemic keeping us all fed? This is an incredibly emotional and complex decision, and then one that is being considered by some of the smartest people in this area. And yet, there appears to be some very strong opinions about how this should all play out. Opinions that are often lacking in understanding of just how difficult this question actually is. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, I'm not going to answer the question of who should get vaccinated first, but rather, I'm going to walk through why this question is so immensely difficult to answer. Let's start with two extremes that we could employ in vaccine distribution. On the one end, we could have a system that very carefully prioritizes groups of people based on some criteria, and then systematically gives out vaccines following this rigid hierarchy. And on the other end, we can put everyone's name in a big lottery and allocate the vaccine totally at random. What's critical is that across these two extremes, one of the major trade-offs is speed. You've likely heard that vaccine distribution has started off very slowly in the US. With only a fraction of vaccines produced actually being distributed, we need to ask why that is. While there are a number of reasons, a major one is the prioritization system being used. The three-tier system that the CDC recommends and that most states are following, at least to some degree, requires that hospitals and vaccine distribution sites are very careful about giving vaccines in a specific order. This bureaucratic step slows things down. We'll return to whether this is ultimately a good decision or not in just a second, but it's impossible to argue that, as it stands right now, by enforcing prioritization, things are going slower than they could. And, critically, they are going much slower than the lottery version would. In that version, we'd basically form a long queue of people ready to get the vaccine, and we'd administer doses as quickly as we possibly could. Now, to be fair, there will be other reasons like limited staff that result in slowdowns, but at the very least, any slowdowns due to prioritization will be eliminated. So, which approach should we follow? Well, before we jump into that question, I want to give a huge thank you to my viewers and my Patreon supporters. Knowing that this channel is providing useful information to people around the world makes all the effort it takes to produce these videos worthwhile. And if you haven't already, if you could, like, share, and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, back to which approach we should follow. And here's where things get incredibly complicated. Let's start with the question of what we're trying to actually optimize. Are we trying to minimize deaths? Minimize hospital utilization? Mental health? Infections overall? Economic disruption? School openings? Fairness? All of those are important to consider, and yet it's not clear what the right answer is. For instance, we all want to minimize deaths resulting from COVID-19, but what if doing so results in more overall infections in the population? Would we make that trade-off? Well, I really don't know. The point is that even the question of which dimension we're optimizing on isn't clear. But to make this topic at least a little bit tractable, let's focus on deaths, since they are certainly the most permanent negative outcome during this pandemic. If deaths are what we want to minimize, then it seems clear enough how to proceed. Vaccinate everyone who is most likely to die if they contract COVID-19, right? Well, that would mean largely vaccinating the elderly and those at high risk of death due to pre-existing conditions, and in fact, that is largely the model currently being followed in the US. The guidelines as of when I filmed this video are that the elderly and high risk have priority over virtually everyone else, with the big exception being healthcare workers, which we'll return to in a second. But before we conclude that this is the right approach, we need to think critically about the alternative. Not prioritizing the elderly, and instead either prioritizing those who are more likely to be exposed to COVID-19 due to their jobs, or just the lottery-based distribution for everyone. On the surface, it seems like this is an obvious trade-off. If the elderly are more likely to die from COVID-19 than, say, people in their 20s or 30s, we should obviously give the vaccine first to the elderly if what we're trying to do is minimize death. But consider this. Most disease spread is directly resulting from younger people who are in the workforce and exposed to the virus at a rate far higher than those who are elderly. In other words, imagine the case where you vaccinated those who are at the highest risk of infection, not at the highest risk of death, first. That would slow the spread of the virus to everyone, including the elderly. Just to make that clear, if we assume, and it's a big assumption, that the elderly are likely getting infected from younger individuals who are out in the world, then stopping infections in younger individuals would not only prevent them from getting sick, but also prevent them from infecting the elderly who are at a higher risk of death. But would that work better at minimizing death than just vaccinating the elderly directly? Well, that's an incredibly hard question as well. To answer that question, we need to build a model 
Basically, a model would be a simulation of the world where we see how our outcome of interest, death in this case, would likely change if we made different policy decisions about vaccine distributions. But to properly create a model to answer that question, at minimum, you'd need to know the exact risk that each of those groups has in contracting COVID-19, the death rate for each of those groups, the likelihood that someone from each group would infect others, how quickly spread would decrease with each group being vaccinated, the degree to which the vaccine lowers disease transmission rates, something that might not be uniform across the population, the interconnectedness of each group within group as well as across groups, the speed with which you can deliver vaccines to each group, and how the existing rate of infection in the population is distributed across groups and how that will affect the likelihood of viral spread in general. That's a lot, and some of those are easier than others to estimate. For instance, we roughly know the death rate per group, but we have an incredibly limited sense of, say, how likely someone in their 30s is to infect someone in their 70s. That depends on how often those groups are in contact, how compliant those groups are to safety procedures like mask wearing and social distancing, and how likely those groups are to actually shed enough virus for the other group to become infected. We'd have to build dozens of assumptions to properly model any of this in order to even come close to the trade-off between vaccinating en masse versus vaccinating with prioritization as we are doing now. The point of all this is not to say that the current approach is a bad one, far from it. The point rather is to say that to make the decision about how to administer vaccines to an entire country and practically to the entire world is immensely complex. There is a right answer if we agree on what metric or metrics we're optimizing, like minimizing deaths, but we don't have anywhere near the data needed to be sure that we are even close to that right answer. And beyond that, it's not clear that the metrics we are optimizing on are the correct ones. Even deaths isn't an obviously correct metric. For instance, another approach is to try and maximize life years, giving priority to younger individuals who have more life to live than to older individuals. Now, to be clear, I'm not supporting this position, but it's not a crazy one to consider. Designing a vaccine distribution plan is immensely complex, based on moral and ethical judgments about what we should prioritize and based on models of infection and spread that use lots of poorly validated assumptions. I raise this point not to scare you, but rather to humble all of us into realizing that when we hear dogmatic positions about one approach or another, we must realize that there is far more complexity behind this issue than appears on the surface. It's easy for pundits to get on TV and radio and support one approach over another, but it's a whole lot harder for them to accept that every choice being made is actually just a well-informed guess. At the end of the day, the goal is to help all of us get past this pandemic, but exactly the best approach to doing that is not obvious at all. With that, I wish you all safety and humility as we round the corner on this horrible disease. As always, thanks so much for watching.